الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام وكفى بها نعمه الحمد لله على منه الولايه وكفى بها منه واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا النبي المؤيد والرسول المسدد والمصطفى الامجد والمحمود الاحمد حبيب اله العالمين ابي القاسم محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين سفن النجاة الأعلام من ركب سفينتهم نجا ومن تخلف عنها هلك وغرب ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا brothers and sisters ورحمة الله وبركاته again welcome to Masjid al-Rahman and to the second night of fasting depending with the first night, second night, whatever the case may be we have been speaking about the merits of fasting and and how we should as Muslims perceive Ramadan which is the month of fasting and we said yesterday that uh, the month of fasting was gradually given to the Muslims and it was not given from the word go yani it was not revealed to the Muslims from the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the first five ayat to the Prophet in Surat Al-Alaq Iqra no what we witnessed yesterday according to historical accounts and jurisprudential accounts, authentic ones, is that the month of Ramadan was prescribed to the Muslims. Who remembers still from yesterday? Second of Sha'ban, which year? Second year of Hijrah. Yani in the first 13 years the Prophet was in Mecca, there was no Ramadan. There was no fasting. For the first 13 years, the Prophet was preaching to the Meccans in Ramadan. Ramadan was not in place. It was not until the Prophet migrated to Medina and he stayed for two years. And in the second day of Sha'ban of that Hijra year, the second Hijra year, that Jibra'il came to the Prophet and he ordained the Prophet to commence the month of fasting and that is when the ayah was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا As we said brothers and sisters before if you can recall from previous uh, speeches and lectures that we had is a special address Yani when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, He's not speaking to every Tom, Dick and Harry. He's speaking to a particular group of people. As the actual ayah or the actual address suggests, Yani when Allah says, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, Is he talking to Ya ayyuha al-ladheena kafaru? No. Is he talking to Ya ayyuha al-nas? No. Why? Because let's say someone among your friends who's not a Muslim, He's decided to fast. Will that fast be accepted? No. Because here Allah is saying to who? Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. Or you who believe fasting has been prescribed to you as it has been prescribed to those before you. I.e. fasting is not a foreign object. It is not something that Islam started with. No. Fasting has been known to people before. And not only that fasting was known to people before us, but fasting was known to people before us in different dimensions. Yani, sometimes as Muslims, we fast from food and water and sexual activities and not to allow nine things to happen to us while we are in a state of fasting or six things according to some Maraja of Taqlid, which we spoke about them in the Ramadan workshop. You must intend in Ramadan to refrain from nine things or from six things depending on your marja. If you don't intend to refrain from these six or nine things, that means your fast is not in place. Huh? And we said that let's hypothetically say, for argument's sake, right? I am in the middle of Ramadan, in the middle of the day, all of a sudden, my intention began to change. From what? From intending to refrain from the nine things or the six things. And all of a sudden, my intention began to what? Begin to play up on me. 
wow, what a beautiful KFC chicken now. Huh? For example, or oh, what a nice chicken from Shismo, Najis. Well, uh, a nice, ma ba'arif show chips from, uh, I don't know where. Aporos. Aporos, wa ma adraka ma aporos. Okay. Any of these thoughts, if they come and your intention is broken to refrain from the nine things, your, your fasting becomes void even if you didn't eat the chicken. So this is something you have to be aware of. Yani when you intend, oh Allah, I intend to fast the, the 30 days or 29 days, whatever the case may be, of the month of Ramadan from the first night. Yani if you started your fast on Monday, you would have made this intention when? Sunday night. Eh? Sunday night, or, or on Sunday, which is the night of Monday. If you started your fasting on Tuesday, then Monday, which is the night of Tuesday, you would have to make that intention. But if you made that intention, right, do you have to repeat that intention again for every day? If you intended to fast the whole month? No. So it is better to make the intention for the whole month. But you made that intention and the following day, you intended while you are fasting to switch your intention from fasting to eating. Salamun alaikum. Kiss your fasting goodbye. Huh? Even if you were saying, oh wow, what a chilling Pepsi in the fridge now. Or a Vimto, whatever drink it is. Walla Laziza, Allahu Akbar. Wa ma adraka ma Laziza with its nine different flavors. Huh? Any of these thoughts that come to you, make sure you avoid it. Make sure you avoid it. But the interesting thing about nations that were before us, that they did not only fast from food and drink or refrain from sexual activities and refrain from entering uh, dust uh, into their uh, uh, mouth or whatever the case may be. No, some of them, they used to fast against talking. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْ لِي آيَةً Zakariya, right? قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْ لِي آيَةً قَالَ آيَتُكَ أَلَّا تُكَلِّمَ النَّاسَ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامٍ سَوِيَّةً So, Zakariya came out to his people and said, Listen, I'm fasting from talking. From now on, I can't talk to anyone. That is a fasting against what? Talking. Is that kind of talk, uh, fasting allowed in Islam? No, it's not allowed anymore. You cannot fast from talking. Because that was a special case. But in your case, you are a human being that needs to communicate. Yani when your mother comes and says, Ya Muhammad, <laughs> I'm fasting. <laughs> Allah, it's wajib on you to respond to your mom, right? It is wajib. It is a must. It's obligatory to go and say to your mom, yes, labbayki wa sa'dayki. To you I respond and the happiness is in your hand in as far as my situation is concerned. And you know what? Don't feel that if you obey your parents that all of a sudden you've become a sissy or you've become mommy's boy. Like some people say, oh, look at this guy. Whenever his mom calls him, he runs to her. But Allah says, this is the way you should be. And if you have people who are in your company that come and tell you, oh, forget your dad now, forget your mom, let's have fun. These are not good friends, brothers and sisters. Because Allah SWT says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا do not say oof to them. Do not swear at them. Do not abuse them. Do not use words that are not befitting to them. Ah, the old man told me. Excuse me? Me know the old man. Look, he's your dad. He's been raising you since you were a kid. And now all of a sudden he's the old man. He's losing his memory, you know that? Oh, you make fun about your dad. La hawla wa la and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala tanharhuma. Do not abuse them. Do not say foul things in front of them. On the contrary, the Prophet in one of his statements, he says, one of the 
rights of a child or one of the rights of a parent or a father over his child is that the child should not speak before his dad tells him to. احنا لا احنا بنعمل موفي قدام البينا نقعد بنحكي كانه فيلم هندي ها huh? when we want to talk it's like an indian movie three hours and then what do you think dad what do you think you've been talking for the past three hours what else do i think <laughs> have you left me at room to even think huh? and that is the case when we argue with with our moms with our, let us not argue let us talk let us have a dialogue between ourselves and our parents and always remember one thing look for good company in your midst don't look for bad company when i'm saying good company means good friends don't go for bad friends because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know what he says innal in innal mar'a ala deeni khalili falyanzur ahadukum man yukhalil the prophet says your religion your conduct your moral ethics your moral code is in accordance to whom you keep as your company so make sure you keep good company the prophet sallallahu says that huh? make sure that when you want to hang out when you want to chillax sure chillax yani yani to chill and relax you put them together you will see chillax okay when you want to chillax chillax with good people Chillax with those when they see you doing something wrong, they don't endorse you. Because a true friend is not the friend that endorses you whether you are right or wrong. But a good friend is the one that gives you the right advice at the right moment. Huh? Not the one that says, yes. Should we prank Hamoudi today? Yes. Huh? Should we go on Facebook and see what Elizabeth is doing and let's crack a joke on her? Yes! La had another good friend. Huh? This is a friend who's leading you towards bad company. He's not the friend that wants you to stay away from evil and from what is bad for you. There are so many reasons why people fast. Whether it is social, cultural, religious, economic, or even medical reasons. And there is a doctor by the name of Alan Cott who wrote a book called Fasting the Ultimate Diet. In his book, he lists a list of about 26 different reasons why people fast. Okay? So again, even in the West, this guy is from the West. He's not a Muslim doctor or someone who has reverted and became a Muslim. No, he's a doctor. He never became a Muslim even. He never became a Muslim. He listed in his books 26 reasons why people fast. Among the reasons, I oh, will go through them. Number one, the ultimate one, to lose weight. <laughs> the quickest and the easiest and the cheapest way. Right? You don't need membership with fitness first. Walla curves, walla fan wood, walla God knows what. Right? You don't need any well, a hardcore gym, well, whatever the case may be, right? No, none of this. Number two, to feel better physically and mentally. Yani, what does that mean? Contrary to those who tell you if you fast, you what? You become lethargic. You become lazy. And unfortunately, yesterday I received an email and I received a caricature about the Muslims in the Arab world. They're showing a man before Ramadan and during Ramadan. Before Ramadan, he's carrying his suitcase and going to work. During Ramadan, he's carrying a pillow and going to work. <laughs> Why? Because that's the perception people have. When Ramadan comes, you don't work. Although the battle of Badr was fought when? In Ramadan. The battle of Badr, which is the most decisive battle that the non-believers launched against the believers, was launched when? In Badr. And the Muslims were fasting because they did not travel the full distance that would allow them to break their fast. They were, fi they were fighting near Medina, right? Near the wells of Badr, which were near Medina majority all of them except those who couldn't were fasting 
during that battle, right? They did not become easy. They did not become lethargic. On the, on the contrary, they became more able and more compelled towards the defense of Allah, the, the defense of the religion of Allah. And look what the Prophet says about these people who fought the battle of Badr. When the Prophet ﷺ went out to meet the non-Muslims or the, uh, the mushrikeen of, of uh, Mecca, the Prophet turned to Allah in dua. Look at the power of dua, brothers and sisters. And this month is the month of what? Is the month of dua. Is the month in which we should remember one another. Is the month in which we reconcile our differences with one another. It's the month in which we should forgive one another. Yani, someone who hasn't speak, spoken to his father in, or brother in 10 years, it's a good time to pick up the phone and say, look, let's end our dispute. Someone who has an issue with his wife, let him today reconcile with his wife. Someone who has an issue with his aunt, with his whatever, with his friend that he loves, that he likes. Of course, friends, yani, female with female, males with females. Eh? I should reconcile with my girlfriend. I'm not talking about that. Huh? Because I haven't seen her in 10 years. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you have a good friend, a Muslim friend, even an un-Muslim friend, but he's a good man, a good person, pick up the phone and say, I am sorry. It takes a man to say, I'm sorry. It takes a mu'min to realize his shortcomings and to go forward and say, may Allah forgive us, let us reconcile our differences. You know, let us reconcile our differences because it's worth it that we reconcile our differences. On that note, to show you what is the meaning of forgiveness in this month and how we should learn how to forgive one another. Imam Zayn al-Abideen, who is the son of Imam Hussein, he used to have orchards. Yeah, he used to have farming land, more than one farming land. One day, he went out with his workers, servants, and they were eating. Point number one, they were what? Eating. Eating what? At the same table. Yeah, and Imam Zayn al-Abidin and his workers were eating where? At the same table. Not like when we hire people from Sri Lanka, for example, or Bangladesh, in our countries, we call them the maids. What do we do with them? We give them the leftover food. We sit on the table and there could be Muslims among them. And we put them in the last room in the house, which you wouldn't even fit your pet in it. You know, and then we, Imam Zayl Abideen used to sit his workers and servants with him on the same table and he would refuse not to eat if they are not sitting with him. One day after they finished, at the end of the month, he said to them, didn't you do this on this and that day? They said, yes, yeah, Imam, we did, and we didn't do our performance of the job correctly. He started pointing out each and every mistake each one of them did, and they all acknowledged the fact that they did not perform according to what they should have done so. What would you do in that case if you are the boss? If you are the owner of the company? Look what Imam Zayn al-Abidin, who is our role model, look what he did. He held their hands. He said, lift your hand up. So they lifted their hands up. He said, I will face now the Qibla. Yani I will face the place of prayer, yani Kaaba. And I will say the following words. Oh Allah, although these workers did not perform according to my right, I make you witness that I have forgiven them. It doesn't end here. Look what Imam then says to them. He says, can you now lift your hands and say, Oh Allah, forgive Zayn al-Abideen. But what Zayn al-Abideen did to you, to you? He didn't do anything. He is an imam and asking his own workers, saying, Oh Allah, the same way I forgave you, ask Allah to forgive me in this day. This teaches you how to soften your heart, brothers and sisters. Don't be egoistic. Don't say, Wallahu wa shiftu ana, three days ago, and he saw me with the corner of his eyes, and he wouldn't say, Salamun alaykum to me. Uh, who does he think his father is? Huh? <laughs> 
Wallah, if the whole heaven came down on earth, I'm not going to say salamu alaykum to him. La hawla wa la quwwata illa Why? What makes you better than these people? And this is an imam. Yes, he may have hurt you. Yes, he may have said something against you. But this is what proves you as a person whether you have faith in Allah or not. And that is what? Overcome your ego. Overcome your personality. Overcome your pride. Pride, which is what? Which is the most problematic system in a human being that destroys him and destroys the world around him. What destroyed Iblis, brothers and sisters, when he was at a time worshipping Allah among the angels? What destroyed him? His pride. Huh? He said, you created me from fire. Or you created him from clay or fire molds clay. Man, if you put clay over fire, it molds it. So fire is better than clay. Allah says you missed the point. The point is not about who is better in creation. The point is I gave an order. And the one that complies with the order becomes my favorite servant. It's got nothing to do. Yani if Allah says forgive, says la ma Ya huh? forgive? Forgive so I could forgive you. Ma ma Someone else comes and he forgives. Why would Allah give you favoritism then over the one that forgives? Right? Impossible. Impossible. Allah will only lend this forgiveness to those who deserve it. Right? To feel better physically and mentally. To look and feel for those who use oil of your land or Botox or God knows what. To look and feel younger. These are not my words. These are the words of a doctor. Huh? It says, if you fast, you will feel younger. And you will be, you will look and feel younger. Tayyip, number four, you save money. <laughs> Have you seen our tables during Ramadan? Kusab laban. Kusab baladur. Kusab balalaban o balabaladur. Every type of zucchini you will find on the table. Zucchini with tomato. Zucchini with yogurt, zucchini with nothing, fried zucchini, barbecued zucchini, grilled zucchini, kibbe naye, kibbe mahru'a, kibbe mnashafa, kibbe knows what. Huh? All these things happen, and you know what? God help our mom if we find one of these items on the same table the next day. And God help her from who? From her husband. Yesterday we had Mjadda. Today also we're gonna have Mjadda. There is no food in this house. Why is it always the same item of food? Who he would have eaten 13 samples of food. We still he remembers the only one which was from yesterday. Ajeeb. Amazing. Why? Because our mind when Ramadan come, Allah says, Ramadan plus what? No, fasting, human being, plus fasting equal what? Taqwa. Equals God consciousness. Allah says, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum. Fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you. La'allakum tasuhun. Huh? So that you will grow or you would develop horizontally. No, no, no. Allah didn't say that. The Prophet, Allah didn't say He said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may gain God consciousness. Yani, you would get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because I mentioned yesterday, the less the food, the less you become more attached to what? Your physical being or your spiritual being? Spirit. Because the food you eat is to make your spirit operate or to make your body operate. To make your body operate. Take the food away from your body. What will grow more further in development? The body or the soul? soul. The soul. The soul. 
so that you may grow further in spirituality towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They save money. Number five, to cleanse out your body. It's the best flushing system. You don't have to detox. And I'll prove it. There was a doctor in Russia who I am willing to bring one of the students who was in his lecture. He lives here in Sydney. He was studying medicine in Russia. One day, this university professor comes into the room and he knows most of the students who were listening to his lecture that night were Muslims. So he said, if I was to believe in a religion, because he's atheist, he said, but if I am going to believe in a religion, it will be Islam. Bombshell. Everyone in the theater, wow, Allahu Akbar. You know, probably this guy saw a dream or something, you know. So the students, they're looking at him in a funny way. He said, wait, wait, I'll tell you why. So they said, why? Tell us. He said, I looked at your religion. And I came across an obligation in your religion that is called fasting. And your fasting lasts between 29 days to 30 days. I wanted to know why this number in particular. Sometimes we say to ourselves, it's a month, who cares? We'll fast. A prescribed number of days. Has any, really serious, has anyone ever thought, why one month? Why 29 days or 30? He says, it clucked or clicked to my head. I went into my lab. I started doing research. He said, I found out after very vigorous research that there is a particular type of microbe inside the stomach of a human being. You cannot get rid of it unless if you fast between 29 or 30 days. Subhanallah. Then he said, how did Muhammad know that? How did he know that? Because to disprove the Prophet, he would have made it 27 days, ya Amin. Right? He would have made it two months. He would have made it 15 days. Or he would have broke the fast all over the year, two days every, or every month. Right? He said, no, no, no. There is a wisdom. You know what? Because it is not your Prophet who told you to fast the 30 days. Someone must have told him because he didn't know. Someone must have told him. And if I wanted to believe in any God, it would have been the God of Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So when people tell you these things, brothers and sisters, or when you come across these things, feel proud that you belong to a religion that university professors acknowledge this type of, you know, amazement at our faith and at our religion. Tayyip, cleanse the body to give the whole system a rest to lower what blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Because you know during Ramadan what happens to us? During Ramadan, one day a person went to a doctor in Ramadan. He did a test. The test for what? For cholesterol. So the doctor waited for the patient to come again. The patient came after three days. He said, I have seen everyone in this world with a bit or a, yani a percentage of cholesterol, but I have never seen someone like you. He said, why doctor, tell me? He said, normally we have cholesterol running in our blood. He said, yes. He said, but in your case, it's blood which is running in your cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Ramadan, you should not supposed to eat, let alone to have only few drops of blood running through your cholesterol. Can you believe the disaster? I don't know how this guy is surviving. The doctor said, I don't know how you live. I don't know how your arteries are blocked, your heart, how does it pump uh, blood? I don't know. It's a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please, fast the right way. Huh? Fast. The right way. What is the right way? Look at the fast of the Prophet ﷺ. When he used to break fast, he used to break fast on what? Tamar. And? And, and milk. Milk, milk. Laban, they call it in Arabic. Laban, here we think, we go to Aman Ushok, Nishri Anint Laban. La Muad al This is yogurt. The Prophet used to drink milk, milk and tamar. 
at the time of iftar. And then what? He'll stop eating. He'll go and pray. Pray, 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 20, 30, 40, 50, rak'ah, whatever he is. Then he will come back home. <coughs> what will he eat? If he found food, he will eat. If he doesn't, he will not eat. Until suhoor. What he will eat in suhoor? Dates again. Plus, again, a cup of milk. And sometimes he would take a little bit of bread and he will toss it inside vinegar. Vinegar. You know, and he would say, Na'mal idamul khal. What a best juice vinegar is. Can you imagine your mother serving you vinegar at iftar time? The World War III will happen on that day. Huh? Well, khal, I want something to soften my stomach, not vinegar to burn it. Huh? Not vinegar to burn it. Here, this man is saying what? It lowers blood pressure and cholesterol level. And what? And it cuts down on bad habits. But look at us. It says fasting cuts down on bad habits. I will end very soon. But what do we do? Especially those who are smokers. The minute it is 5.30 or 5.29 and 59 seconds, the first thing we are lighting up is what? Is the cigarette. Allahumma <laughs> taqabbal Huh? Oh Allah, accept this fast from us. What? On haram. You're breaking your fast on something that is haram, according to some maraja or according to all maraja. If you want to take smoking for the first time, right? If you want to smoke for the... And you are proud, uh, pr uh, taking pride on breaking your fast on something either haram or makroom. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah it should be used as a good habit to make us refrain from these type of activities. And what? It let the body heal itself if you fast. Number 11, to relieve tension. 12, to end dependence on drugs. To sleep better, to digest food better. To regulate bowels, to feel euphoric, to sharpen the senses to quicken mental process, to save time, to boost self-esteem, to learn better eating habits, to share with the hungry, to gain control of oneself, to seek spiritual revelation, to observe religious rites, to call attention to social issues, and to slow the aging process. Said by who? Muhammad, no. Mr. Kot, a doctor. Amazing. And then when someone, someone asks us, why do we fast? I don't know. Mom told me. Excuse me? Mom told me to fast or dad told me. No, there are valid reasons that Allah knows about them more than this doctor says. And out of his mercy, not only that you fast and you gain these 27 different good habits and different good things for your life. No. On top of that, God comes and gives you a bonus. And I will end with that bonus, which I ended that, uh, my speech yesterday with that bonus. What did the Prophet ﷺ say about this month? He says, this is a month where the beginning of it is mercy. mercy. First 10 days, ahsan. The middle of it is forgiveness. forgiveness. And the end of it is <laughs> emancipation from hellfire. أوله رحمة وأوسطه مغفرة وآخره عتق من النار. الله relieves you from hellfire. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى relieve us from hellfire by the end of this month. وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين.